Hi, my name is Samantha Montalegre and welcome to the Maternity Mentor. This video is the continuation of our three-part series on sexually transmitted diseases and how they can affect your pregnancy and your baby. This is part two of three. Thanks for joining us. Today is part two of three, discussing sexually transmitted diseases during pregnancy. For anyone who doesn't know me, I have been a registered nurse for 11 years. I have spent my entire career working in the maternal newborn nursing area, including mother baby postpartum, NICU, antepartum, and labor and delivery. I have practiced as an IBCLC for eight years and have been maternal newborn nursing certified for seven years. I have received specialized training in perinatal mood and anxiety disorders as well as perinatal bereavement. This video will examine different sexually transmitted diseases, their signs and symptoms, treatments, and how it can affect your pregnancy and baby. Sexually transmitted diseases or infections are also known as STDs or STIs and are a taboo subject in our society. It's important for women to realize they are not alone and talking about this is not shameful or wrong. A lot of women are embarrassed to speak with their partners or their physicians about STDs. However, it's extremely important to do so as they can cause long-term problems for mothers and birth defects for babies. This video is not intended as medical advice and viewers are advised to consult their physician if they have any symptoms, concerns, or questions. Let's start with HIV or human immunodeficiency virus. HIV is a virus that damages the immune system. The immune system helps the body fight off infection. Cases of HIV progress through three stages. Stage one is the acute stage, which is the first few weeks after transmission. Stage two is clinical latency or the chronic stage. Stage three is the development of AIDS. Anyone can contract HIV. The virus is transmitted in bodily fluids that include blood, semen, vaginal fluids, rectal fluids, and breast milk. HIV is spread from person to person through vaginal or anal sex, which is the most common route of transmission, by sharing needles, syringes, and other items for injection drug use, or by sharing tattoo equipment without sterilizing it between uses. HIV can also be spread during pregnancy, labor, or delivery from a woman to her baby, during breastfeeding, and through pre-mastication or chewing a baby's food before feeding it to them. In the early or acute stages, the symptoms of HIV are like those of the flu. Early symptoms can include fever, night sweats and chills, aches and pains, swollen lymph nodes, sore throat, headache, nausea and upset stomach, skin rashes, sores and infections. After the first month or so, HIV enters the clinical latency stage. This stage can last from a few years to a few decades. Some people don't have any symptoms during this time, while others may have minimal or nonspecific symptoms. A nonspecific symptom is a symptom that doesn't pertain to one specific disease or condition. Nonspecific symptoms may include headaches and other aches and pains, swollen lymph nodes, recurrent fevers, night sweats, and fatigue. They can also include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, weight loss, skin rashes, recurrent oral or vaginal yeast infections, pneumonia, and shingles. Women may be less likely than men to notice small spots or other changes to their genitals. Women with HIV are at increased risk of recurrent vaginal yeast infections, other vaginal infections including bacterial vaginosis or BEV, pelvic inflammatory disease, menstrual cycle changes, and human papillomavirus or HPV. Women with HIV can transmit the virus to a baby during pregnancy. 
Women who are treated with antiretroviral therapy are at very low risk for passing HIV to their baby during pregnancy and delivery. Antiretroviral therapy is considered safe during pregnancy. Breastfeeding is also affected in the woman with HIV. The virus can be passed to a baby through breast milk. So in the United States and other settings where formula is accessible and safe, it's not recommended that women with HIV breastfeed their babies. For these women, use of formula is encouraged. Options beside formula include pasteurized and banked human breast milk. The most common way for HIV to spread is through anal or vaginal sex without a condom. This risk can't be eliminated unless abstinence or avoidance of sex is practiced. Risk can be lowered considerably by taking a few precautions. Use condoms from the first vaginal or anal penetration. It's important to keep in mind that pre-seminal fluids can contain HIV. Pre-seminal fluids are fluids which come out before male ejaculation. Get tested for HIV and other STIs. Limit your sexual partners. Take medications as directed and ensure partners with HIV do the same. Do not douche after sex. Douching after sex can alter the natural balance of bacteria and yeast in the vagina, making an existing infection worse or increasing the risk of contracting HIV and STDs. Avoid sharing needles or other drug paraphernalia. A person who has been exposed to HIV should contact their healthcare provider to obtain post-exposure prophylaxis, or PEP. PEP can reduce the risk of contracting HIV. It consists of three antiretroviral medications given for 28 days. PEP should be started as soon as possible after exposure, but before 36 to 72 hours have passed. A person at high risk of contracting HIV should talk to their healthcare provider about pre-exposure prophylaxis, or PrEP. If taken consistently, it can lower the risk of contracting HIV. PrEP is a combination of two pills available in one form. HIV is a lifelong condition and there is no cure. However, with medical care, including treatment called antiretroviral therapy, it's possible to manage HIV and live with the virus for many years. Without treatment, a person with HIV is likely to develop a serious condition called AIDS. Untreated, a woman with HIV has a 25% chance of passing HIV to her baby during pregnancy or breastfeeding. With antiretroviral therapy throughout pregnancy and avoidance of breastfeeding, the risk is less than 2%. Now let's talk about human papillomavirus or HPV. Human papillomavirus, HPV, is a virus that can be passed from one person to another through intimate skin-to-skin -skin or direct sexual contact, including vaginal, anal, and oral sex. Because HPV is a skin-to-skin -skin infection, intercourse isn't required for transmission to occur. Some strains of HPV infection can lead to cancer, including oral cancer, cervical cancer, vulvar cancer, penile cancer, and rectal cancer. HPV infection often doesn't cause any noticeable symptoms or health problems. The most common symptom of HPV is warts on the genitals, mouth, or throat. 90% of HPV infections go away on their own within two years. However, because the virus is still in a person's body during this time, that person may unknowingly transmit HPV. It's estimated that 80% of women will contract at least one type of HPV during their lifetime. Some women may notice that they have genital warts, which can appear inside the vagina, in or around the anus, and on the cervix or vulva. There's no treatment for HPV. HPV infections just often clear up on their own. A vaccine is available to protect against nine types of HPV, including the most dangerous strains HPV-16 and HPV-18. Women and men ages 15 to 26 can also get vaccinated on a three-dose schedule. Additionally, people between the ages of 27 and 45 who haven't 
been previously vaccinated for HPV are now eligible for vaccination. The easiest way to prevent HPV is to use condoms and to practice safe sex. Contracting HPV doesn't decrease your chances of becoming pregnant. If you are pregnant and have HPV, you may wish to delay treatment until after delivery. However, in some cases, HPV infection can cause complications. Hormonal changes that occur during pregnancy may cause genital warts to grow. In some cases, these warts may bleed. If genital warts are widespread, they may make a vaginal delivery very difficult. When genital warts block the birth canal, a cesarean section may be required. Cervical changes can still occur during pregnancy, so you should plan to continue routine screening for cervical cancer and HPV while you're pregnant. In rare cases, a mother who has HPV can transmit the virus to her baby during delivery. When this happens, a rare but serious condition called recurrent respiratory papillomatosis may occur. In this condition, children develop HPV-related warts inside their throat and airways. We hope this information helped you understand more about sexually transmitted diseases and empowered you to be comfortable talking with your partner and your physician about them. Remember, this video is not intended as medical advice, and viewers are advised to consult their physician if they have any symptoms, concerns, or questions. We will link resources down below for more information. Please share your comments and let us know what topics you would like to hear more about. If you like this content, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe so you can be the first to receive this information. Remember to share this channel with your friends and family and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for additional content. We will link those in the description below. Thank you so much for joining us at The Maternity Mentor.